Hi, drama class. Um, of course, this is Miss Hall, and uh, welcome to our new adventure in e-learning. Um, I'm going to be using videos like this, videos and slideshows like this, um, as well as posting some videos, posting some articles um, using our Google Classroom and um, meeting on Google Meet every Tuesday. Um, so I can't wait to, to start hearing from all of you. So before we left for the break, we were looking at some different theater forms around the world. We were looking at capoeira, which involves dance and music and martial arts. Um, and we're also looking at uh, Koteba, which really focuses on the oral tradition of sharing stories um, and African folklore. Today, we're going to be looking at a form of theater that comes from Japan, and it's called Kabuki. So Kabuki, as it says on the screen as you're watching, um, is composed of three different words. So Ka meaning song, Bu meaning dance, and Ki meaning skill. And that skill is really focused on the amount of skills that are seen on stage from the actors, um, from the musicians, and from the, the choreographers as well. So like I just said, uh, Kabuki comes from uh, Japan. It's been around for, for about 400 years. And like some of the art forms that we've been looking at, Kabuki uses very specific stock characters. So these stock characters are recognized from the types of makeup that they're using, the types of costumes that they're going to be wearing, and even the types of movement. So how the character is actually moving. So I'm not going to tell you, but I'm sure that you already are making some connections to some different forms of theater um, that we were exploring earlier in the year. Um, so Kabuki, it combines singing and dance and mime, pantomime, costumes, makeup um, to actually create a lot of the stories that they're telling. So we're going to talk about it a little bit later on. Um, but along with the actual written stories, really what Kabuki focuses on is the actual spectacle. So what the audience is seeing on stage. Um, so it really focuses on the skill of the performer rather than the actual written word. So of course, improvisation is strongly, strongly encouraged. So Kabuki, it first was developed um, in about around 1603. And this was a period of time in, in Japanese history where there was a lot of wars, there was a lot of civil unrest. So people really needed something um, to keep them entertained, to keep them actually hopeful. So it was actually first developed by a female dancer named Okuni. And again, it was something for people to actually use as a form of escapism, something to actually make the people a little bit hopeful as an outlet. So she would perform not in a traditional theater, um, but it would always be moving. It was always just made from, from whoever, whatever communities were actually there in front of her. So a lot of makeshift stages um, and a lot of touring stages, I guess you could say. So she started combining dance and music and acting and even cross-dressing to actually make these, these pieces come to life. So it was adopted more widely where the performers and the costumes became more elaborate. So really starting off with Okuni and just a few performers and then being uh, adopted across um, Japan. And because it became so popular, a lot of the costumes, a lot of the stories uh, became a lot more rich. So Ona, meaning uh, women's, um, was actually how kabuki was later on used. So meaning that there were not male performers, it would only be females that were actually performing on stage. However, this quickly, quickly changed um, when, when women were actually not allowed to perform on stage anymore. So we hear about this a lot around the same time period um, when Shakespeare's plays were being put on, that women were actually not allowed to perform on stage. So of course, if women are not allowed to be performing on stage, it would usually be men, men dressing up um, as, as women. It was actually usually young boys that were dressing up as women. So their voices would be a lot higher. So different from some of the theater forms that we've been exploring, the first Kabuki plays were about 12 hours long. So again, thinking back to it, not only as an art form itself, but also as a form of escapism, an outlet. So these plays would take up the entire day. Um, so, of course, like I said before, the female performers were outlawed in the 1620s. 
So it continued with young male performers, but eventually men playing women's roles was also outlawed in 1642. So eventually rules were implemented that men could only perform um, if they shaved the top of their heads. And they made themselves more unattractive. So even the way that they were holding their bodies, their facial expression, even the costumes that they used um, was to completely avoid looking attractive in, in any way to avoid um, unwanted attention. So some elements of Kabuki that we're going to be looking at today, and um, there's some videos that I want you to watch and then com some comparisons that we're going to be making later on. So stage combat, music dance, magic, and fantasy, dramatic plots, colorful costumes, heavy makeup, flamboyant and extravagant spectacle, like I mentioned before, a moral um, or lesson, like when we're looking at children's theater, exaggerated but controlled movement. Now, these seem almost completely opposite, but hopefully you'll get an idea when we actually start looking at some uh, mime and pantomime. And also monotone voices that are accompanied by music. So again, the actual voice of the actors was not the main draw. It was the music. It was the bright costumes, the bright makeup, and the actual beautiful way that they were moving and the way that they were dancing. There's another art form that's quite similar that also comes from No, and it's even older than Kabuki, and it is called No. So another Japanese art form that is called No, N-O-H. And they are quite similar. However, some of the main differences is that Kabuki is a lot more extravagant. There might be similar storylines, but Kabuki is a lot more extravagant, the way that they're moving um, and the costumes and spectacle at large. So some of what we're going to be looking at might be even similar to some of those, those no plays. Um, but again, um, really focused on, on those elaborate costumes. So similar, I guess you could say, to Koteba, which was that art form that we were looking at from Africa that had two very distinct um, play structures, and it was always quite similar. Kabuki also has a very specific structure um, in how their plays are organized. So usually they're split up into four to five parts, focusing on the distinction. So those differences between the historical play that would always come first and the domestic play that really focuses on family life um, and focuses on a lot of times marriage and love. So they're separated by dances um, that are that are in between um, or comedies, including um, mystical characters. So the first one, so that historical play, it always comes first, is called the Jedi Mono. Um, and these plays um, are not always uh, totally, totally factual. There's often a lot of fantasy that's mixed in. So you can think of it as a historical fiction, um, but again, is rooted deeply in history and in history that a lot of the people that are coming and watching the plays will actually know. Okay. The domestic dramas were called the Sewamono. So again, really focused on family life, really focused on love. Um, and the last one, so again, looking at those three parts, is called the Ogiri uh, Shosa Goto. So it's a final dance, and this would usually be the most beautiful, the most spectacular to watch. So again, in between these very distinct sections would actually be um, a dance in between. Okay. So very different from some of the theater forms that we were focusing on earlier. So looking at um, Commedia dell'arte, looking at the ancient Greek theater, um, even looking at the last one they were really focused on, the children's theater. Um, so having these very distinct acts, but those distinct acts, they don't actually always have uh, a theme that carries over to all of them. So quite different from when we're going and seeing a show when usually act one um, and act two, um, you know, is the same characters, is a continuation of the same, the same storyline. So one of the most famous of the Jidemono stories is actually called the Soga Cycle. So I'm not going to play this video for you right now. Um, 
At the beginning, you'll see that the storyline is actually outlined, and then it's a series of photos that come after. But I'm going to post um, this PowerPoint so that you can go check it out on your own, on your own time. Uh, but this really focuses on um, two brothers, and it's a revenge story where they go and they get revenge on a father, on their father that um, was killed years before. Um, so I'll play. I'll play this next one for you though. So again, looking at how a lot of the art forms that are focused on or an art form that is focused on when we're looking at kabuki is actually dance. So this dance, it's choreographed um, by Tama Saburo Bando, who's a very, very famous um, kabuki choreographer. And this dance is focused on a Japanese character, Japanese uh, folklore character called the Heron Maiden. So um, it is said that this, this mystical character is a woman, but it's, uh, it's actually the spirit of a heron. So I'm going to play the beginning. So this, again, would actually take place in between those different distinct, distinct sections. I'll just put a little bit of this for you. Like I was saying earlier, and again, similar to some of the theater forms that we were already focusing on, Kabuki characters um, are always or always have stock characters. So archetypal figures that you're going to see um, and you're going to recognize no matter what play you're seeing. So looking again at the costumes, the way they're moving, even the actual makeup that they're wearing, you're able to recognize those stock characters, those characters that are archetypes that are not changing. So the, the three different different um, archetypes that we have and there's different roles um, throughout these so the onagata so these are the female roles so we have one that's the elegant princess we have the courageous town girl and she's a hero um, and then we have the maid of a samurai so again all of these wear different distinct costumes that would be recognizable on stage and different ways of moving then we have the takiyatu um, so we have the hero the aragoto and we have um, the Wagoto, so the gentle and graceful um, male character. So again, these are not all of the stock characters, but a few just to give us some ideas of how they um, split these stock characters up. And then we have the Kata, uh, the kata Kikau, the evil noble. So the evil king. Um, and then we also have the super villain. Now there's also um, some children's roles. And so those are those are other types of roles that we um, would see or that you would see on stage. But these three are really the main distinct character types that you'd be seeing um, when you're watching Kabuki. So again, looking at how not only costumes, but also the makeup is usually very specific. So the colors and also the styles. Um, so the kumadori is is the type or the style of makeup that would be used um, to do kabuki makeup. So here are some different examples um, on the right for the different styles that, that would be used. So red, whenever you see red um, in their makeup and their costumes, it really means strength and passion. So you can think of a lot of the, the hero characters would be wearing a lot of red. Indigo, blue, and black usually um, represents fear and evil. So it's worn by villains and, and even demons. Green, brown were usually the monsters or even the supernatural. So not necessarily um, have to be evil characters, but characters um, that are non-human. And then the purple would be nobility. So I'm sure that you can already assume that some of these colors um, might appear on, on multiple characters or multiple colors appearing on one character um, to represent the different parts of their, their personalities, their characteristics.
Um, so additional to some of the terms, some of the information that we were already talking about, here are some additional kabuki performance terms. Okay, so we have the meet. So this is very famous. So whenever there would be a heightened moment, um, a moment we really wanted the audience to actually focus on, um, an actor would hold a pose for long periods of time. So this probably reminds us of tableau. So again, looking at those frozen pictures um, to represent one significant part of the storyline. Um, we have the Hanamichi, so the flowery ray. Um, so it's a long walkway or catwalk from the stage um, to the audience. And the actors would actually walk from the audience and through the audience onto the stage. And though this was so popular for the actors to walk from the audience and use that Hanamichi that a lot of stages would actually end up having two Hanamichis, where a lot of the main action or a lot of the fight sequences perhaps would actually happen in this catwalk, in this flowery way. Um, so a lot of the me poses, so those frozen images would happen um, on this Hanamichi. Um, we have the uh, Haya Gawiri. Um, sorry, I'm butchering some of these names. The Hayagawari. Uh, so this is a technique for when the actors have to do really quick costume changes. So when we are watching um, the video of the Heron Maiden, um, so the woman who was dancing and she was dancing to music at the beginning, if you, and you can go back if you want to, um, you'll notice that there was a really quick costume change. She was initially wearing um, this red costumes and then immediately it changes and it probably takes um, them about five seconds to actually do this costume change. So this was the technique that was used in that video when they were doing that costume change. And we have uh, the samisen. So this was a traditional Japanese three-stringed um, instrument um, that was used to accompany kabuki. So originally it would just be the samisen that was used. Um, and then as, as we progressed or as the theater form progressed, um, there would be several samisens that were used. Um, in, and other instruments as well, a lot of drums as well. So what I want you to do this week, it's going to be um, a short journal response. So you're going to be reflecting on some of the material, um, some of the information that was shared with you um, about Kabuki in this lesson. I would also like you to watch um, the videos that I posted with this lesson so you'll get an even deeper understanding and different, uh, a deeper meaning about what this theater form is, what it looks like. Um, but you are going to be comparing the theater form Kabuki with one of the theater forms that we explored this year, okay? So looking at the Greek chorus, children's theater, commedia dell'arte, pantomime, improvisation, capoeira, or coteba. So again, capoeira and coteba were the two art forms that we looked at just before we left for March break. So you are going to compare your chosen theater form with kabuki, listing at least two strong similarities and differences um, with the both with both of the forms. Okay, so two similarities and two differences. So it should, it's going to be a paragraph response. Um, really, it should only take you about 10 to 15 minutes to write this response. Again, looking through this PowerPoint again after you're done and some of the other materials that we've been posting that I've been posting um, online for us, okay? Um, the second thing that you're going to do, so you can write it in the, same, uh, in the same document, just make a little space, is what country's theater forms would you like to explore and why, okay? So two questions there. What country's theater forms would you like to explore and why? So both of these um, you can submit on the Google Classroom. Um, you'll see the tab up there. You'll see the assignment up there. Um, so just post post it in that um, in that assignment. So that should only take you about five minutes to do. OK. The last video. Um, and I, I will let you explore this on your own, is a really, really, really great um, introduction to looking at Kabuki. So this, again, might even give you a little bit more in depth about this art form. He uh, gives a really great explanation about some of the history, um, what it looked like, and some of those stock characters. Um, they focus on two different Japanese art forms in here. Um, so from the beginning until minutes 730, Kabuki is the one that is heavily discussed. But I would encourage you to watch the whole thing. It's really well done.
Okay, have a great rest of your day. Just a reminder that Tuesday is when we will have our um, office hour. So this will be a chance for you to log in with the link that I gave you. It's going to be um, in your email. It's also on your, on your uh, Google Calendar. And this will be a great chance for you um, to ask me any questions. Most of the questions this week, I'm sure, will be about this assignment, but also what e-learning is going to look like for all of us. Okay, have a great day. Bye.